Welcome to the Week 8 edition of Northeast Conference Football Digest. I'm Ralph Ventry, and as always, I'll be your host for this week's program. Now let's get started. There are four Northeast Conference matchups that comprise the Week 8 schedule. Albany is the lone idol team this week. The Great Danes head into their bye with a record of 6-1 and one and a perfect 4-0 in the Northeast Conference. Albany rose to number 22 in the FCS Top 25 Coaches Poll this week and is on the cusp of breaking into the Sports Network Top 25. In our first matchup of the week, we'll preview a team that's nipping at Albany's heels in the Northeast Conference standings. So on we go to the Week 8 Rundown. The first Week 8 matchup we preview takes us out to DeGaulle Field in Loretto, Pennsylvania. That's where St. Francis will host Wagner. The visiting Seahawks are 3-1 in the NEC, one game behind first place Albany in the league standings. They're fresh, coming off a bye, and they'll take on an upstart St. Francis team that features the top rushing attack in the Northeast Conference. No matter who the opponent, the Red Flash have found a way to run the ball effectively this season, but they'll have no easy task on Saturday as they'll face a Wagner defense that ranks first overall in the Northeast Conference in yards allowed per game. The Seahawks are also first in scoring defense in the NEC. When these two teams have met in recent history, a tight matchup has usually ensued. Seven of the last eight meetings between Wagner and St. Francis have been decided by 10 points or less. And of course, there's the memorable 2009 meeting between the two teams that ended with Wagner winning a three overtime affair by the score of 56 to 48. The two starting quarterbacks we'll see on Saturday, St. Francis's John Kelly and Wagner's Nick Dosher, were both freshman starters during that 2009 game and had some of the best numbers of their entire career. Kelly threw for over 300 yards that day and the mobile Dosher ran for three touchdowns. The way these two defenses have played though, a 56-48 game may not be likely this week, but it doesn't mean that there won't be tons of excitement out at Big Ol' Field when Wagner meets St. Francis. We'll stay in the Keystone State to preview the next Week 8 matchup. This one is out in the Steel City, where Robert Morris will host Central Connecticut at Joe Walton Stadium. The host Colonials are coming off a tough loss they suffered out in Smithfield, Rhode Island last week, falling to Bryant 38-35. The good news for Robert Morris in that one was the emergence of running back Evan Taylor. Taylor put forth his second straight 100-yard rushing effort and has averaged 6.8 yards per carry over the past three games. Taylor and the Colonials will go up what is an improving run defense for Central Connecticut? Head coach Jeff McInerney used his Twitter account to point out his pleasure with the Blue Devils' effort in stopping the run in last week's win over Duquesne. McInerney noted that the defense is getting close to where he wants it to be, but the team must keep working. The veteran head coach also noted that he was pleased with Central Connecticut's balance on offense last week. The Blue Devils passed for 202 yards and ran for a season-high 293. Coming off his best statistical effort of the season, Central Connecticut quarterback Andrew Clements should keep his head on a swivel this weekend. That's because Robert Morris has one of the most vaunted pass rushers in Northeast Conference history. Academic All-American Nolan Nierhoff had three quarterback sacks last week to become the first Colonial ever to surpass 20 sacks in a career. Whether it's the emerging Evan Taylor, the improving Central Connecticut defense, or the sack master Nolan Nearhoof, there are plenty of reasons to watch this one, which will unfold at Joe Walton Stadium this Saturday. While Robert Morris will host Central, 
The other half of the NEC Steel City contingent will welcome Sacred Heart to town. The Pioneers and Dukes enter the game under different circumstances. Sacred Heart posted an impressive 27-10 win at Dartmouth last week while Duquesne dropped a heartbreaker at Central Connecticut, watching its seven-game NEC win streak go by the wayside. The good news for the Dukes is they'll be back home playing within the friendly confines of Rooney Field, a place where they have won their last nine games. One interesting note is that both Sacred Heart and Duquesne had reserves step up and performed admirably in key spots last week. On the Duquesne side, the NEC's leading rusher Larry McCoy was unable to go as he's still recovering from an ankle injury he suffered back on September 29th. Fortunately for the Dukes though, Ryan Ho stepped up in McCoy's absence and ran for 114 yards on 19 carries at Central. On the other side, Sacred Heart saw starting linebacker Nico Sierra leave the Dartmouth game in the second quarter due to injury. But even in Sierra's absence, Sacred Heart did not surrender one more point. Part of the reason why, freshman Kellen Sperduto stepped in and made eight tackles in Sierra's absence. The key to the Sacred Heart Duquesne matchup just may be which team gets its running game going early and often? Of course we know what McCoy and Ryan Ho can do for the Dukes, but then Sacred Heart has sophomore Cashada Spence. Spence has been on fire of late. He ran for 138 yards last week and has two 100-yard gains in his past three outings. And the final matchup on the Week 8 docket takes us down to the Jersey Shore, West Long Branch, where Monmouth returns home to host Bryan. This one will put some of the league's brightest offensive stars on display. Bryan's Jordan Harris is having a year unlike any other receiver in the NEC in nearly a decade. In six games this year, Harris has made 38 catches for 702 yards and eight touchdowns. The most remarkable stat, the fact that all eight of Harris's touchdowns either tied the game or gave Bryant the lead. Ironically, Harris will continue his pursuit of a 1,000 yard receiving season at the former home field of one of the last men to ever accomplish the feat. Former Monmouth Hawk and current Dallas Cowboy, Miles Austin, had 1,004 receiving yards back in 2005, the last time an NEC receiver hit the millennium mark. Now that you know about Jordan Harris, it's important to not overlook the talented receivers on Mammoth's side of the field. The Hawks' Tristan Roberts had a huge game last week at Cornell with over 150 receiving yards. Then, there's the Jersey Shore's own Neil Sterling, a Jerry Rice Award finalist as a freshman in 2011, Sterling is rounding back into form after being slowed by an injury earlier in the season. Then of course, there's Kyle Frazier. He's the man responsible for getting the ball to Robert and Sterling. Frazier, Mama's fifth year senior quarterback, is again the NEC's Offensive Player of the Week. What did he do this time? Well. He only threw for 451 yards and accumulated an NEC record 513 yards of total offense in last week's 41-38 setback at Ivy League member Cornell. The way things look, there'll be no shortage of offense in this one, certainly no shortage of offensive talent. So keep your eyes on Bryant and Mammoth as they clash at the Jersey Shore in Week 8. So there you have it, NEC fans. An exciting week eight of football awaits. While first place Albany has the week off, eight Northeast Conference teams will take to the gridiron in increasingly important league matchups. You can watch one of those matchups live and free of charge right here on NEC Front Row. 
Just log on to NECFrontRow.com at noontime on Saturday and click the game link for Wagner and St. Francis and sit back and enjoy exciting Northeast Conference football. Remember, folks, we do this every week, so don't forget to join us again for week nine of NEC Football Digest. I'm Ralph Ventry, and that'll do it.